Okay, in this episode we're going to talk about Seascape's energy system. By energy system I mean how we power all the stuff that we need to run, you know, anything from the charging GoPro cameras to auto helms, you know, auto helm motors. So how do we power all these things? It's a 12 volt DC electrical system. Fundamentally, we need to say that up front. I've done a chart which shows you the different components in the system and how they are interrelate. So I think maybe if we can start off with that um, and, and run through that, that will give us a good overview of how the system works, how it relates, and then we'll talk about each item that's in the system. Okay, let's go to the chart. Okay, so we're going to drop an energy plan for uh, Seascape. Um, we can do it slightly different in that we're going to start on the other end of the scale, um, starting off with consumption, we're going to list the items that draw current from uh, on, the, on the energy system, listing those with the highest energy demand, filtering them down to the lower energy demand. So the first one would be the fridge. As you can see, it's a big fridge. It's deep. It's about a, a meter deep, um, and yeah, it's quite large. It's got quite a nice big surface area on top that we can use for chopping and whatever else. As you've seen, it draws a lot of current. It draws between 8 and 4 amps, um, which, yeah, it's a lot of current, depending on what stage it is. So if it's if it's been warm and it's been defrosted and we power it up, it draws a lot of current. And then as the temperature in the fridge gets colder and the items in the fridge get colder, so the, the, the current demand comes down to uh, anything between 3 and 4 amps. But let's take a look inside. You see it's got two compartments, but they run all the way down to the bottom, so that's the size. Um, and each compartment has its own uh, element, and each element is driven by its own motor condenser. So that's the reason why it draws so much current, okay, because it has both these elements. But the upside is the beers are always cold. The next item on the demand list is the instruments. You know, so that that includes all our instruments outside, being you know the depth, boat speed, windex, and and probably the bigger draw, biggest draw of current has been the auto helm. All right, so the main instruments um, are these guys here, housed in this console. We have the depth and speed instrument. Okay, the wind indicator tells us the direction of the wind and the speed of the wind. As you can see, we've got 20 knots of wind right now on the nose. Okay, it's because you're an anchor. And then this is the, the auto helm pilot head. Our Ray Marine chart plotter, the screen started packing up and instead of replacing the chart plotter, we upgraded our iPad and loaded Navionics on it. And it's part electrical system because it, it plugs into a charger, you have to keep it charged all the time. Um, but it works very well and uh, we plot our courses on here and check our boat speeds and time of arrival etc and it's out of the elements it's down here what's really good is that we can relay these on our cell phones so whether we're in the cockpit uh, we're getting the same information on our phones although this is the main device we're getting the information on our phones and then uh, when we're sailing at night and Charlotte's asleep and I'm on watch or vice versa we can be lying in, in bed and at a glance at our phone we can see that yeah we're on we're on track we can see our boat speed etc so yeah it's just relaying information and making it accessible the different parts of the boat um, and it, yeah it works very well following instruments would be the radio that's both radios that's the vhf radio and you know the listing radio the normal radio and, and they draw about two amps so we've got two radios and they're both connected on the system under the same control button one is the vhf radio it's a Ray Marine, as you can see. And here is the mark. That's a very piece, important piece of equipment. It's got DSC signaling. And the other radio is a normal uh, FM radio for listening to music and whatever. These two radios are connected together on the system. They're on one radio switch. The next item on the list is the nav lights. The nav lights are LED. All three of them, or four of them, I should say, they draw about two amps. Following on from that, well, that's just, you know, the other other things on that draw current. So collectively, they don't draw too much current. Okay, so like I said, we've got a 12 volt DC system, um, but there's certain items that run off AC 220, uh, 240, 220, 240 volts. We run that through the inverter. Okay, so what this does is it's connected directly to the battery system. 
and it inverts the current from DC to AC and ups the voltage to 220 to 240 volts. Very important piece of equipment. This particular one is a pure sine wave inverter. That gives you a better quality current. Okay, I think it's very important to get sine wave inverters. It's a 500 watt inverter. And one thing to bear in mind with inverters is that the stated wattage isn't necessarily the consistent current. Okay, that's normally the peak current. And so with a 500 watt inverter, continuous current, I'm probably getting 200 watts uh, continuous current. But yeah, you know, for our needs, this is perfect. It works fantastic. It also has, if you look on the top here, the, there's the power switch. It also has a USB here, so you can charge phones or whatever else with a USB here um, without it actually even being on. So yeah, this guy works well, um, but a very important piece of equipment. In fact, when we sell to Madagascar, I'm considering buying a second inverter just to keep them back up. So if this one fails, we have another inverter we can install quickly. We're going to now look at the, the control panel. All devices that draw current on the system run through the control panel, which is fantastic because you can then select what you want to have current on, what's not going to draw current, and switch it on and off, and you can customize your energy demand. So here's our control panel. It does have two gauges on it. Um, tells us it's an analog gauge. Tells us how much current is in the batteries and how much current we're drawing. I don't really use these gauges because they're analog and they're not very accurate. I prefer to use a digital gauge that's on the MPPT controller. We'll have a look at that just now. Yeah, these are all the main switches: nav lights, mooring lights, steaming light, deck lights, cabin and saloon lights, and then he has a 12 volt power outlet. Being a French built boat, a lot of the labeling is marked in French. So that there is a water pump, that there is the bilge pump, refrigerator, shower drains, that's to empty the showers, instruments for navigational instruments and hel auto helm, etc. The two radios, as I said, they're on one switch, and then these are spares. This is the 220 240 volt um, panel, uh, and it indicates. Uh, whether when we're on 240 volts they light up to say that the power is coming through and again you can select where you want to send current to. I just want to show you inside that one thing I'm very impressed about on the on the Beneteau boats is the plumbing is done very neatly very tidily done and well labeled um, and the same applies with electrics. Okay so we open up the panel and you can see there's all the wiring to the gauges and the switches there's all the other wiring, you've got your main circuit breaker over here, and then the fuse box. But uh, as you can see, everything's neat, tidy. Fortunately, I haven't had to work on it, uh, but I would imagine it would be, yeah, I wouldn't say a pleasure, but it'd be a lot easier to work on than most boats. It's neatly laid out and, and well labeled. The next up is the heart and soul of the system, being the batteries, the battery bank. And what we have on Seascape is three 105 amp hour deep cycle gel batteries. They're connected in parallel, so that gives us 315 amp hours. I'm very happy with these batteries, they perform very well. And they don't discharge down too dramatically and um, they hold their charge well. And they're new batteries and I'm hoping to get six years out of them. But yeah, this is the heart and soul of the system. Yeah, if you look here, you'll see we've got two crocodile clips, one on either end of the system, so that way it's connected to the whole system and not just one battery, and that's the inverter. So the inverter comes through here, it's connected to the battery system and draws its current directly off the battery. Okay, then we get onto the controllers and we're going to do the controllers with the energy sources because they're intrinsically linked together. The first energy source being the 220 volt shore power. So that's 220 volts AC, it's our normal standard shore power depending on where you are in the world. South Africa is 220 volts uh, and that leads straight onto Seascape and is directed through to the um, the battery charger. All right, so still in the engine compartment system, we have the the battery charger. Like I said, it's the brains of the system. It's an intelligent system and it controls the batteries and the amount of charge being sent to the batteries. Make sure they don't overcharge 
um, and sends them current when they do need charge. So while we're on shore power, the 240 volt shore power connects directly to the battery system and that takes the current and decides where to send it. So it sends some current to the, the engine battery, it sends current to these guys here to keep them fully charged and it also sends current to our 220, 240 volt power points. So this gets fitted with various 240 volt power points that we can plug in those you know, devices that need 240 volts and the battery charger will send current to those as well. Our next energy source is the engine alternator. The alternator sends current to the battery charger and the battery charger then directs the current to the batteries again determining how much current the batteries needs and, and make sure they don't overcharge or they're not undercharged. That's the big guy. That's the brains of the system. The last energy system is our solar panel. So we're directly taking solar energy and converting it into electrical energy. It's our favorite source of energy. They send the current through to the batteries via an MPPT controller. And again, it's a smart controller. It monitors the amount of current that are in the batteries. And when the batteries reach float state, it stops sending current through to, to the batteries. All right, so now we get down to the, the brains of the system. Your MPPT controller is one of the two brains of the system. Very important piece of equipment. The power from the solar panels is driven through this controller. All right, and this controller is connected to the solar panels and it's connected to the battery. It's consistently reading the charge in the batteries, right? feeding back and deciding do we need to top up or don't we need to top up, do we need to shed power or do we need to load power into the batteries. And that happens consistently. Right. This is our display, it's telling us that we've got 13.6 volts in the batteries at the moment right? and that the solar panel feeding into the battery, that flashing icon there indicates that the batteries are, are full now. It's what you call float charge. If we click here, okay, we can see the amount of current that's coming in from the solar panels to the batteries at 6 amps. Okay, she normally, this is a 20 amp controller, so she can contribute at least 20 or maximum 20 amps to the batteries. So the fact that it's only sending 6 uh, amps through to the batteries tells us that the batteries is, are full and that is actually being used to drive the refrigerator at the moment. So that's Seascape's energy plan. I think what's key in our plan is that our energy demand is low. You know, we don't have air cons, we don't have washing machines. That enables us to run on a very simple system with um, not excessive battery power. Would I make any changes to the system? Yeah, there's a few things I'm considering. One is to look at replacing the fridge motors with new motors which will be a lot more energy efficient because if I can get that demand down it's going to make a, quite a big picture a difference to the big picture. The other one is we've I noticed that by on most days by 11 a.m. in the morning uh, the, the batteries are full they're really at float level um, which means that after 11 you know those peak hours during the midday we we're not utilizing solar energy that we could be so I'm going to investigate maybe adding another battery to the, the battery bank, pushing our capacity up to 400 odd amp hours. Because we have, we have the, the, the ability to charge the batteries, there's no doubt about that. So if we add another battery, that'll give us more amperage. That's just fine tuning the system. Um, but yeah, we're happy with how it works and it, uh, it covers our needs. I hope you found this, this uh, video informative. If you go to our boat tour playlist, you'll see other videos on various other things on Seascape like the anchoring uh, anchor and our ground tackle and anchoring. There's a, a video on the sails um, and we're going to be adding more videos to that as well. Hope you enjoyed it. Ciao!